Good afternoon, everyone. Outstanding leadership is measured through its impact on society. As Adam Smith, the father of economics, said, no society can flourish of which the greater part is poor and miserable. Education is the key that unlocks the pathway for society to flourish. And this truth is very much at the heart of Heriot Watt University's own mission and ethos to bring education and knowledge to individuals across the world, wherever they may be. Our honorary graduate today before us has experienced the privilege and journey of education in his life, but has unlocked the pathway to education to a whole nation through his personal mission to provide free education for all in Zambia. It is with great honor that the Harriet Watt University bestows an honorary doctorate upon Hakiendi Hashlima, the president of Zambia, a distinguished leader whose profound journey from business acumen to transformative stewardship exemplifies the virtues of dedication, resilience, and foresight. Zambia and Scotland have had a special relationship for over a century and a half, not just the connections through David Livingstone in 1856, but through a shared ongoing commitment to partnership in education. Harriet Watt has also been part of that journey, as we welcomed former President Dr. Kenneth Kaunda to speak here at Harriet Watt in 2009 when he told us about the contribution to his father's education and his own education by a teacher and family in their school who had worked with the staff of the Harriet Watt College. We were privileged last year to celebrate the landmark milestone of over 1,000 Zambian graduates from Harriet Watt University at a reception in Lusaka and later here in Edinburgh with a speech by our honorary graduate president at Panmure House the former home of Adam Smith, just off the Royal Mile here in Edinburgh. Work in Zambia and fathers, their worries every beginning of the term as to where the school fees will come from are no more. They just have to deal with mundane things that every pupil, every child needs when they're in school, but not school fees. We've gone beyond just getting kids in school, but also to support those that come from vulnerable homes through a school feeding system. Also meal allowances for kids that are in college, that are in university. We know that if a kid goes to school on an empty tummy, they're unlikely to succeed. So this is a package of measures that we put in place. And two years, nine months in office, these measures are bearing fruit already, and we're very pleased that we've been able to serve the country and our people in this manner. Our belief in the universal value of education is not only based on our own experiences, but in watching the success of others from Lusaka to here in Edinburgh to do what they've been able to do over the years. And I was saying to Professor Williams that three of our largest banks in our country are run by ladies I refer to three musketeers. They are graduates of Harriet Watt University. Great. <laughs> For this reason, we were delighted that this university has provided over 50 scholarships for young Zambian leaders to start for qualifications here. Truly, truly appreciate this gesture and we only can wish it to continue in larger quantums. Right now, Zambia is suffering the worst drought since our recorded history, or records began. And we invite you as graduates, professors, scientists, academic leaders, associates of Harriet Watt to support us in Zambia to do two things, one, to ensure nobody goes hungry during this drought, as most of our agriculture was rain-fed. But secondly, to increase resilience, so that in future, with climate change that is showing its ugly head, when there's a drought again, when there's a flood, 
we will still be able to feed our people. So resilience, irrigation, best agriculture, technology that we've been talking about, post-harvest loss, uh, mitigation measures, as Prof. Williams indicated of the research going on in this university. We would like all of this to bear on the situation that afflicts us in Zambia and in other parts of the world. As we're having a drought in Zambia, we have floods in neighboring Kenya, near neighboring Kenya, Tanzania. Last year we had floods and drought in the same rain season. Never happens. But these things need to be planned for and the work that's going on here is beneficial to the global community. It is our responsibility to encourage climate change justice for marginalized groups while we utilize the best, as I say, technology and research from this university and elsewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, we can only continue to invest in education, health, social justice, when we have the economic capabilities to do so. I'm a very conscious individual on this issue. Every time I'm asked the question, what's your focus for Zambia? As a chief servant of the people, I say first, in that order, economic transformation, success, then social support. Because you can't have the latter without the first. So we are conscious of that. So economic success is very important to us. So we promote, as I come here, stand here, we promote investment trade for the reasons that we have already articulated, but also to offer opportunities to young people who go through school, jobs, business opportunities, as it were. So I'm always marketing our country, and I do so in this hall today as I speak, that investment opportunities are abound in our country, and we would like the alumni to exploit those opportunities. As Zambia has restructured our debt, very difficult situation that we inherited when we took office, and becoming the first country under the G20 global framework to qualify for a debt restructuring. And we would like other countries to walk the steps we've walked, very difficult. In fact, I called it at some time, mission impossible, but it's done. And we thank all of you. We thank all of you for your support in many ways. Just the voice that you put in, but also the UK government, UK people, and others that have stood on our side to overcome this difficult mission, which opens the way for greater things to come in the economic sphere and obviously the social spheres. With 200 years of history, Harriet Watt University understands how global systems change over time. Through the university's Go Global initiative, students are being exposed to a broader variety of cultures and experiences than ever before. This is really good. We believe fundamentally that when we are able to know each other better, we are able to work together more effectively, isn't it? I think it goes without saying. With this greater understanding of our fellow men and women around the world, we create peace together, an ingredient necessary for the economic prosperity that we all aspire to have in our countries and in the global community as a whole. Many of the ideas of economists, great economists, Prof. Williams, like Adam Smith, and I'm very delighted that um, I was in Edinburgh not long ago and presented, um, if you like, a paper at a place, at a location where Adam Smith lived and did some of his great writings. It's a rare privilege. And Prof. Williams, thank you for that once more. So we know what Adam Smith basically put together for us as young students years and years to come is still valid today. Yes, we need to create some adaptations, work on adaptations when we utilize these, if you like, ethos but it's still valid today as it was before. And we need to exploit these research you know, results that came out of hard work from people like Adam Smith. Many of the original ideas, as I said, which led to the creation of Harriet Watt University over 200 years ago, remain relevant today. How ironic. Ladies and gentlemen, 
as you go out of this room as graduates, you are doing so as global citizens in an increasingly interconnected world. Absolutely so. Absolutely so. Just imagine a village boy going into the city of Lusaka, knew nobody at all, came out, went to Birmingham, now we're here. How can we say we have our own community? Yes, you may say so, but we share one community across the world. And what we do in our small communities affects others in another. Miles and miles. As we know, the war in Ukraine, Ukraine, Russia war, is affecting all of us. So we must do good to our communities and invariably through our communities we'll be doing good to the global community. Very important. Very important. So, let's go out there to do good for society. When we do good for society, our only interests will be taken care of. I believe in that. The work you do in Scotland, if I emphasize, will be felt everywhere, including Zambia, and vice versa. Our successes are your successes, and your challenges are truly our challenges. For this reason, and many others, we must work together for peace, prosperity, and a bright future for all. I thank you for your kind attention.